I've got a short story for you today, and it's by the same author who wrote The Hodge Hegg, Dick King Smith. And this book has got two stories in it, and the first one is about a character called Connie, and it is called Calculating Connie. Connie Button seemed a very ordinary baby. Not to Mr and Mrs Button, of course. They thought she was the most wonderful baby ever, as parents do. Which she was, though at first they didn't know it. When Connie was about 18 months old, she still hadn't spoken a proper word. She made noises, of course, as babies do, but they didn't make sense. Mr and Mrs Button were eagerly looking forward to the moment when she would say something that they would understand. Harold, said Mrs Button one fine day when her husband came home from work. It's happened. What's happened, Muriel? asked Mr Button. There's a picture of them so you can see what they look like. Connie has spoken her very first word. I say, what fun, what was it? said Mr Button. One. One what? That's what she said. She said one. That was her very first word. I say, that's odd, said Mr Button. I wonder what she'll say next. Some weeks later, Mr Button arrived home to be told that Connie had spoken her second word. And what was it? he asked. Two. She said two? Yes, said Mrs Button. And then what do you think? She said one, two. I say, said Mr Button, that's odd. I wonder what she'll say next. You might perhaps guess that the third word which Connie Button spoke a month or so later was three. You'd be right. And indeed, she then said one, two, three, as Mrs Button told her husband when he got home. And for quite a long time, that was all the child said. But I doubt if you could guess what happened next on Connie's second birthday. Mrs Button was dangling Connie on her knee. Mr Button was drinking a cup of tea. Connie Button was saying one, two, three. Now, you might perhaps think that Connie was about to say four. You'd be wrong. Connie swallowed a mouthful of birthday cake and then loudly and clearly she said one, two, three, six. No, Connie, said Mrs Button. It's one, two, three, four. It's not, said Connie. It is, said Mrs Button. Connie's face went very red. She clenched her fists and drummed angrily on her mother's knee. One, two, three, six, she shouted. She does look angry. I say, said Mr Button, what a fuss. Why is she making such a fuss, Muriel? She cannot know what she's done wrong. One, two, three, six, yelled Connie furiously. Suddenly, the truth dawned upon Mrs Button. She's right, Harold, she said. She's right, don't you see? She's not just counting, she's adding. She cuddled Connie and dried her tears. One and two and three make six. That's what she's trying to say, aren't you, darling? What a clever girl. I don't think I can believe that, said Mr Button. Anyway, I don't know how the child has learnt these numbers. Have you been teaching her? No, said Mrs Button. She just comes out with them. Seven, nine, sixteen, said Connie. You see, said Mrs Button, seven plus nine equals sixteen. I say, said Mr Button, that's odd. It's not, said Connie. It's even. Do you get the joke there? Did you hear that, said Mrs Button. She knows the difference between even and odd numbers. I can't believe it, Muriel, said Mr Button. Try her, Harold. Mr Button addressed his daughter. Ten, he said. Even, said Connie. Five. Odd. Add eight to three. Eleven. Add four to thirteen. Seventeen, said Connie. I say, said Mr Button, the child is a genius, Muriel, only two years old and she can add four and thirteen correctly. She's a mathematical genius. Perhaps she can do even better, Harold, who knows, said Mrs Button. Try her with a harder sum. Mr Button smiled. He took out his pocket calculator. She won't do this one in a hurry, he said. Now then, Connie, listen carefully to Daddy and see if you can add these two numbers together. 1,356 plus 
Oh, Harold, cried Mrs Button, don't be ridiculous. It's only for a joke, Muriel, said Mr Button. Of course you won't be able to do it. Listen then, Connie, 1,356 plus 903. Connie Button's little face wore a frown of concentration. She pursed her lips and stuck out the tip of her tongue and screwed up her eyes. Told you, said Mr Button. Poor little love, said Mrs Button. 2,259, said Connie Button. Wow. Mrs Button was doing her shopping, pushing Connie around the supermarket in a wire trolley. As she put the first item into it, Connie said, one. And the child continued to count as the fish fingers and the nappies and the bread and the margarine and all the other things were loaded up. Until as they approached the checkout, Connie said, 24. And Mrs Button thus knew that she had bought two dozen items. There's that number again, dozen. The next time they went shopping, she said to herself, I'll try telling Connie the price of each thing as we go along, just for fun. You never know, she might be able to add them all up. She picked up a bottle of tomato sauce and showed it to Connie and said, This is 46 pence. And Connie nodded. There'll be lots more, said Mrs Button. Can you add them all together for me? And Connie nodded. So up and down the aisles they went, while Mrs Button called out the prices as she loaded up the trolley. Tea, 66 pence, she said. Biscuits, 54 pence. Tin of salt, 38 pence. Small tin of chopped ham with pork, 37 pence. Honey, one pound and 59 pence. And so on until the trolley was full and each time Connie just nodded. That's it, I think, Connie, said Mrs Button at last. She'll never have remembered all that lot, poor little mite, she said to herself. That kind of mental arithmetic would be too hard for all but the cleverest of adults. Anyway, she was probably just nodding and not actually listening to what I said. But I can't resist asking. As they moved towards the checkout, Mrs Button said, How much altogether? £17.20, said Connie. Opening her purse with her fingers crossed wasn't very easy, but Mrs Button managed it. And as the checkout girl was starting to ring up her purchases, she placed upon the counter a £10 note, a £5 note, two £1 coins and a 20 pence piece. £17.20, please, said the checkout girl at last, and then realised that the exact money had been sitting there waiting. Fancy, she said. You add them up as you go along, do you? Mrs Button smiled. My little daughter does, she said, and the checkout girl laughed loudly at such a ridiculous idea. Whatever will Harold say when I tell him, thought Mrs Button. Apart from his first two words, I mean, I know what they'll be. I say, said Mr Button when he was told, do you mean to tell me, Muriel, that Connie added up all the things you bought in her head and came out with the correct answer? Yes, Harold, said Mrs Button. And you bought a large number of different things. Oh, yes, an awful lot. And I don't even know how many. 27, said Connie. I say, said Mr Button. And I'll tell you another thing, Harold, said Mrs Button, because I was looking carefully at the prices so as to tell Connie what they were. I found quite a lot of bargains and I saved some money. About 5%, I should say. What's percent, said Connie. Well, Connie, when Mummy says she saved 5%, it means she saved five pence off every pound. So she only had to pay £17.20 pence instead of... Let me work it out. £18.10, pence, said Connie. Mr Button took out his little machine and pressed its buttons. He shook his head in wonderment. Muriel, I don't need this thing anymore. We have our own human pocket calculator. Not only adding, but subtracting, dividing and multiplying came easy to Connie. The buttons soon discovered this. Life became much simpler for them. Thanks to Connie, Mrs Button always knew exactly what her household expenses were, while Mr Button, who ran a small business of his own, found his daughter's skill most useful. His bills and receipts, his investments, his income tax and VAT returns were all child's play to Connie. She needed some help, of course, for though she knew her numbers, she couldn't yet read any words, but all her calculations were correct to the last decimal point. No computer would have done any better. How proud of her the buttons were at first. <laughs>
Just think, said her mother, what could she be when she's grown up? Professor Constance Button, the world's greatest mathematician, said her father. And they never tired of telling Connie how clever she was. She might work out the price of curtain material in her head, of course, as she couldn't manage a pencil. And Mrs Button would say, that's brilliant. Or she might tot up a long list of different purchases plus VAT at 17.5% and Mr Button would say, fantastic. At first, Connie basked in all this praise, but as time went on and the Buttons grew accustomed to her feats of mental arithmetic, they began to accept her answers without comment. £143.35 plus £72.06 plus £170 and £3 plus £42.16 pence less 10%. Mr Button said one day. £328.14, said Connie. Mr Button just wrote down the answer. Connie looked sulky. Naughty daddy, she said. Didn't say Connie was clever. Didn't I? said Mr Button absently. Connie stamped her foot. Connie cleverer than daddy, she said. I say, said Mr Button. That was only the start of it for Connie Button. It soon became plain to her parents she was becoming very swollen headed. That's easy, she took to saying whenever she was asked to do a sum, and that led to, can't you do that yourself? And that led to, silly mummy and stupid daddy. Connie, in fact, began to patronise her parents, and as well as being rude, she became disobedient and extremely bad-tempered. I say, Muriel, said Mr Button one evening after Connie had gone to bed, this is beginning to get me down. Do you know, I questioned one of Connie's answers today. I thought she'd made a mistake, and so I worked it out on my calculator, but in fact she had got it right. She would, wouldn't she, Harold, said Mrs Button, and there was more than a trace of bitterness in her voice. But that's not all, said Mr Button. I said to her, you were right, and she said, of course, I always am. And you know, Muriel, I could have slapped the child, she looked so smug. And another thing, said Mrs Button, she's taken to setting me problems. And if I try to write the sums down, she says, no, 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 do it in your head, can't you? I can do it in mine. And it makes me feel such a fool, Harold. Me too, Muriel, said Mr Button. At that moment, Connie appeared. Can't sleep, she said grumpily. Try counting sheep, said Mrs Button. How many, said Connie. Count to a hundred. That's much too easy. A thousand then. <laughs> That won't take long. Oh, count to a zillion, said Mr Button. Connie looked scornfully at her father. Silly daddy, she said. A zillion isn't a real number. You're so silly you are. And she flounced out of the room and up the stairs. I say, said Mr Button, I'm not putting up with any more of this. And he shouted loudly, Connie, come back here. Now, whether Connie turned suddenly when she heard her father's angry voice or whether she just missed her footing, we shall never know. But the next thing the Buttons heard was a thumpity thumpity thump as Connie Button tumbled all the way down the stairs from top to bottom to lie spread eagled on the floor. By the time the doctor arrived, Connie seemed to have quite recovered. The doctor examined her. She's had a bit of a bang here, he said, feeling her head. Mummy, said Connie, can I have an apple? Oh, said the doctor, smiling, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. How many apples would that be each week, Connie, eh? Connie didn't reply. The doctor laughed. Ha, <laughs> she's much too young to know her numbers, of course, he said. I say, said Mr Button, but then he caught his wife's eye and didn't say any more. They waited until the doctor had gone and then they looked at one another again. You heard what the doctor said, Muriel, said Mr Button. I did, Harold, said Mrs Button. Wouldn't it be a relief, though, if Connie couldn't calculate? And wasn't always right. And always able to do sums that we can't. And always saying silly mummy or stupid daddy. In fact, said Mr Button, if she were just an ordinary two-year-old. They looked at Connie, playing happily with her toys. Try her with an easy sum, Harold, said Mrs Button. Connie, said Mr Button, what's five times nine? 2010, said Connie. Mr Button held up four fingers of one hand. Connie, he said, what have I got here? Fingers, said Connie. Yes, but how many? One, two, three, four, eight, six, ten, said Connie. I say, said Mr Button, that doesn't sound like a future Professor Constant Button, Constance Button, the world's greatest mathematician. I know, said Mrs Button, 
Isn't it lovely? She's just like any other child of her age. After all, you're only two, aren't you, Connie? Connie smiled happily at her parents. Yes, she said. And when you have your next birthday, said her father, how old will you be then? Connie Button's little face wore a frown of concentration. She pursed her lips and stuck out the tip of her tongue and screwed up her eyes. And then she gave a huge smile. Four, she cried. And all three of the Buttons burst out laughing. Why do you think they laughed when Connie said four, when uh, her mum said you're two and how old will you be on your next birthday? Made them all smile at the end. <laughs>